Hey, hi, hello. Welcome back everyone to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing part two of how to make a variable linear gradient component. If you caught the last video, then you'll know that we achieved this already. And so today we're going to build on that a little bit further and actually componentize it so that we can reuse it in any other component that we want. If you haven't checked out that first video, I recommend to go do that first and then come back. That way you're not missing anything. I'll include a link to part one in the description below. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So as a quick recap, we created these gradient fills here. And on the left, you'll see that this is actually using the linear gradient straight from Figma. And on the right, you'll see a few different little layers that are doing all of the magic for us. We achieve this by masking uh, sort of with like alpha channels with a black gradient that goes from 100% black to 0% black uh, in terms of opacity. And I did a sample down here where we were able to achieve the exact same thing, um, but with different colors. I'm going to go over here to another um, uh, tab here. And this is actually what we're going to build, be building today. So I like to call components like these sort of utilities rather than truly being uh, components, so to speak, as part of a design system. Um, and so anyway, this is one of those utility components that I think is very valuable. Um, I put a little description here. This is a variable based linear gradient component that supports theme switching, it's scalable. It allows you to change the direction of the gradient. It's fully composable. All of that good stuff I mentioned in the first video and more. And this component really is uh, composed of three parts. So this first part is the direction. So this gradient direction here is actually what's going to allow us to control the direction of the gradient. This is totally optional. Uh, you could achieve this by doing um, maybe like gradient styles for this rather than componentizing it. For this video, I, I, I chose to componentize it, but if anyone's interested in that other um, option, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to demo that as well. Although it's probably a little more straightforward, so um, might be able to figure it out. But if not, just let me know. Uh, the second part to this is actually a gradient mask. And I'll explain why we actually need this. Um, when I first made it, I bypassed this and then I, I later discovered that we do in fact need this uh, because of the way that Figma handles overrides when masking inside of a component. And finally, it's putting it all together and creating this gradient. So we're going to do a little bit. We already have this linear gradient here. So I'm just going to bring this over to the file. And I'm just going to make things easy for myself um, and paste it right into here where the final component is going to live here. So I'll go ahead and paste it right there. and. I want to go ahead and name this. I like to sort of name my layers as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and call this gradient mask. Awesome. And now what I'm going to do is I want to be able to uh, essentially create all of these directions. So I'm going to bump this up here just so I can have it right next to where the final one's going to go. And I'll go ahead and just turn this into a component by pressing that little icon up there. Or if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can press uh, Command Option K on your keyboard. What I'll notice is that this component, which I'm now calling uh, Gradient Mask, or I'm sorry, this is actually Gradient Direction. So let's call this Gradient Direction. I'm glad I have my little cheat sheet here. And what you'll notice is if I expand our new uh, Gradient Direction here, maybe I'll just call it new so we know that that's the one we're working on. Um, and then I'll go ahead and change these uh, to be gradient direction for now. What we'll notice is I've got my component and then I've got a rectangle inside of that. I'm going to copy these styles. So command option C, shift enter to select the top level and command option V. And that'll get rid of this fill here. And then I can also get rid of this extra rectangle I don't need. So command option V, and then I'll just go ahead and delete that. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to create some variants here. And I know that I need eight of them. Anytime that I uh, create variants inside of an auto layout, pushes it down. So I'll just arrow key that back up. 
I'm going to call this first property direction. And I like to add auto layout to uh, my uh, component variant sets just to make things a little bit easier to edit. I'll press enter to select this first one. And then I'm going to duplicate this eight times or seven times to get eight total. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Again, this component uh, is going to allow me to change the direction once it's all fully, you know, said and done. So what I'm going to do here is um, <clears throat> actually begin to change the gradients of all of these. So I'll do that by um, just coming into here. And in this case, I'm just going to swap these. Cool. There we go. And so I'm going to do it so that I do uh, up, down, left, right, and then sort of the equivalent of that up, down, left, right, uh, going in the other direction here. Okay. So, and the way that I'm doing it is based on like where 100% opaque is. You guys feel to free, uh, feel free to do it however makes sense to you. Um, this is just kind of what made sense to me. So hopefully that works for y'all. Uh, next is this one's good. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one here and I'm going to move the black over to this middle point, move this one over as well, exit that, move on to the next one and I'll move the black over here and then the transparent one there and feel free to skip through this part. I will not be offended. Um, I know time is valuable, so I'm just going to drag this over to the corner there. Um, and I'll just continue uh, here in the video. So almost done. I've got two and a half left to go. And then this one's going to be this bottom right corner, top left corner, and last one. Just going to drag this over there and then move this over here. Okay, so I've got my gradients there. You'll see it matches the uh, the original version I had. And the reason why I had these is because I just want to quickly be able to uh, rename all those. So I'm just going to copy them into here, paste, copy, paste. So I'll just go ahead and do this the long way. There we go. Um, also, I'm going to try something a little bit new um, I'm just going to kind of roll with all of the mess ups, roll with the punches, so to speak. Um, in the past, it's, uh, I've sort of obsessed over getting the videos perfect. And, uh, that sort of led to me not posting any videos for, you know, two years. So we have our gradient fills here. Um, I think everything's looking good. Uh, just kind of quickly check that those match, which they do. So that's great. Um, the next step is actually to uh, go ahead and turn this into a component. Um, but we're not going to create the gradient mask yet because I want to actually show why we need that. In order to do that, we have to understand what the issue is. So let's go ahead and bring over uh, the gradients that we had before. So I'm just going to copy this exactly as it was from this other file. And I'm just going to paste it up here. I'm pasting it up here because this has auto layout and I don't want it to mess everything up there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy my new gradient direction. Uh, my new gradient direction, sorry. And I'm going to bring that over here to uh, just paste it here real quick. So this gradient mask, I'm going to rename gradient direction. This is from the previous uh, video. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste to replace that command shift R on my keyboard. And we'll see that when I did that, that broke the mask. So there was previously a mask there. If I paste to replace that, it breaks the mask. So then I have to select them again, command option, command control M to remask it. And then we're sort of good to go, right? So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and change that. And that looks good or there, right? So I can change the gradient, which is really nice. Uh, cool. Okay, so now that that's done, I can actually select this whole layer here, press Command Option K on my keyboard, 
and I componentize it. So now if I call this gradient and I drag out an instance of it, we'll see that we now have a linear gradient component that we have the ability to change the values of. That wasn't a very good example. So 100 there. And we'll do, I think, a different color, maybe something like that, right? So now we have the option to change the values of our gradient. And once again, let's just confirm that this is actually, you know, a true gradient, so to speak. So I'm going to get these hex codes here, undo that. And one more. Okay, undo that. And then let's just create this gradient all over again here just to make sure that we know things are working the way we want. And we'll do this here, uh, copy that, and paste it over here. Uh, looks like I pasted it wrong, okay. F5, 0, 0, 5, 5, there we go. And I'm gonna flip this and just drag it right next to each other. When we drag it next to each other, we'll see there's no seam which tells us it's a fully fluid, beautiful, smooth gradient. Okay, so now that we have that, let's then try to you know change our direction of the gradient. So right now it's going from the bottom to the top, right? What I like to call, uh, at least the way that I've built these is, if we look at our layers panel, gradient stop one, which is at the bottom, okay, in this case, so let's change our direction. Well, I know that the uh, the uh, new gradient direction is a component, but I don't see that ability to change the direction of the gradient here. Well, we can fix that by coming back to our main component, clicking on the plus sign of the properties panel, and then when we click on that, sorry, we'll click on nested instances, and then surface those properties there. Okay, so once we do that, I'm gonna actually come in here and uh, actually I'll go over here and then we'll see if I select the instance, I now have the ability to switch the direction of that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll see that when we switch it, it breaks the gradient. So let's look at what happens in our layers panel here. Same thing I did, I showed earlier when we pasted to replace, it broke the mask and what's happening is because this component is now inside of another component and it's an instance and it has its own variance, changing that component is actually breaking the mask that is powering this gradient component. So if I undo that, you'll see that it is masked there. As soon as I change it, it creates an override, it breaks our mask, and so that's what we've got to resolve, right? So I mentioned before there was three layers to this. The first layer was the direction, which we've done. So we can check that off. And then the second layer of it is actually to create a gradient mask. And this component is actually very simple. All that's in there is the gradient direction component and just a little wrapper to keep that uh, component locked whenever it is overridden. So all that we have to do is we're going to take our um, gradient mask component and drag out a fresh instance of it. I'm going to recomponentize it here. Now this is going to be called new gradient mask. Okay, we're going to surface those nested properties here, just like we did before. We will see that um, I have access to those, right? So that's good. And now, rather than masking our gradient with the gradient direction directly, this is the part where it gets a little bit complicated. Um, we're actually going to mask it with our gradient mask component that contains our gradient direction. And the reason that works is because whenever everything is nested, so to speak, in Figma, we're not actually overriding the mask layer. We're actually overriding the layer inside of it. So rather than you know talk about it, we'll just show it. So here is an instance of our new gradient mask component. And here's our main gradient component. And I press enter to get into these layers here. And 
where we have our instance of new gradient direction, I'm going to press Command Shift R to replace that with gradient mask. We'll see that it momentarily breaks our gradient. I'm going to select gradient stop one, which is the fill, right? That actually has the gradient or the, the color that we want. And now I'm going to press uh, Command Control M on my keyboard to remask that. Okay. And so now if we expand that again, and we will uh, reset the overrides here. So reset all changes. Actually, let's just drag a fresh one just to make sure that, you know, there's no tricks, you know, going on here. What we're going to do is, uh, of course, surface these nested instances one more time. So there we go. And we will surface them there. And now this time when I change the direction, you'll see that because this is the layer that's masked, and it's essentially just transparent. It only contains the, the gradient inside. There's no override actually going on at this level. The, the override or the edit to the component is going on one level deeper. So when we change the direction here, it remains intact. Our mask remains intact. So that's why I've, uh, I think, uh, you know, called them what I think is, is smartly called them direction, mask, and then gradient. So all of those, you know, sort of techniques combined allow us to have a single gradient component, which we've now made, that allows us to change the direction in any direction that we want. And it allows us to uh, also, of course, change the colors. So I can put uh, like grape 50 here. I can do uh, maybe, you know, blue 60 and just create beautiful gradients that I can then, of course, change the direction of. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I hope that you found this video helpful. I know that for me, it's one of the most exciting techniques I've developed that I've been super excited to share with everyone. I think for me, it's very transformational. You know, it's one of those things that isn't supported out of the box from Figma. And I know that when the color variables first came out, there's a lot of people that were a little bit bummed about it. So hopefully for those of you who've been looking for uh, variable gradients in Figma, this technique will work for you. All right. And that's all I have. So thank you all so much. Um, there will be more videos coming soon, probably a little bit more on some gradients. Um, but anyway, I hope that this has been helpful, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.